In this video, I'm going to explain the GameStop Rebellion and why it's important. Let's get started. Hey there, this is Patrick King with Prana Wealth. On this channel, we help you build your wealth faster so you can make work optional sooner. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. GameStop, the video game retailer, finds itself embroiled in a sort of financial hostage negotiation between Wall Street hedge funds and the unwashed masses of online investors. The GameStop rebellion, as it has been called, brings up several important questions which I will do my best to articulate. First, let me bring you up to speed on what's happening. This all started with shorts. So this whole thing is centered around a short, which is when you borrow a stock from a brokerage firm and immediately sell it at its current price. You do this if you expect a stock's price to fall. If the stock's price does indeed drop, you can repurchase it at a lower price return the shares to the brokerage house and pocket the difference. For example, let's say that you think the price of ABC stock is going to fall. You decide to short ABC stock at its current price of $10. While you now have $10 from immediately selling the borrowed stock, you also owe the brokerage house one share of ABC. Let's say soon after the price of ABC drops to $7. At that point, you cover your short, which means that you buy ABC at $7 and return the share to the brokerage house. The difference of $3 is your profit. Sounds like an easy way to make money, right? Not so fast. What happens if the price of ABC goes up instead? You still owe the brokerage house a share of ABC, but it's going to cost you more to buy it. So for example, let's suppose that the price of ABC increases from $10 to $13. Once you cover, you will now lose $3. Now what happens if ABC increases to $20 or even $30? Your losses are limited only by how high the stock price can climb. For our hypothetical ABC company, the most you could make on a short would be 10 bucks if the, if the stock price drops to zero. However, your losses could be massive should ABC start on a run. So if it grew to $100 a share, you'd be $90 in the hole. Before you know it, the brokerage house starts checking your accounts to see if you have enough money to make good. Enter GameStop. A few weeks ago, a group on Reddit called Wall Street Bets noticed that Melvin Capital, a large hedge fund, had taken a sizable short position against GameStop. In essence, the hedge fund was placing a huge bet that the stock would tank. This isn't unusual. Hedge funds do this all the time. Here's where it starts getting weird. People in the Reddit group decided that they would join together and buy as much GameStop as they could, forcing the stock's price to rise. And rise it did. As GameStop began to soar, the losses of Melvin Capital's short positions mounted. In January alone, GameStop rose from $17.90 a share to a staggering peak of $396.51 per share. The hedge fund's potential losses climbed into the billions. Some question if the losses were greater than the value of the fund itself. Melvin Capital would have to cover its shorts at hyperinflated prices. This is known as a short squeeze. Melvin Capital's losses were so massive that it needed a $3 billion bailout from two other hedge funds. Melvin Capital has stated that it has covered its shorts, but it is unclear whether or not that's true. Vigilante Capitalism why on earth would a random group on Reddit band together to short squeeze a hedge fund out of business? It appears that Wall Street Bets embodies a sort of populist rage toward Wall Street. Large hedge funds have a long history of driving companies into the ground in order to profit from shorts. Indeed, it seems that Melvin Capital was doing what it could in order to drive the price of GameStop lower in order to increase profits. Sadly, it's not illegal to go on television and trash talk a company's stock while you own shorts in it. 
It's a move that represents the most detestable aspects of Wall Street. So Wall Street bets decided to stick it to the man and make money in the process. They intentionally tried to catch Melvin Capital in a short squeeze, and it worked. To me, that's the most shocking aspect of this entire affair. In fact, it's surprising that another large hedge fund didn't beat this group of Redditors to the punch. It seems that Melvin Capital's GameStop short play was clumsy and heavy-handed at best. There's actually some question of whether or not there's institutional money backing Wall Street bets. No matter whose idea it was, it's clear cut that these people aren't merely Luddites throwing their stimmy checks at a failing company. Regardless of their initial motivations, once they drove Melvin Capital to the brink, Wall Street bets developed a taste for blood. They began searching for other hedge funds to short squeeze into bankruptcy. A seething populist rage. As Glenn Greenwald pointed out, while this Reddit group is being characterized as politically alt-right by the media, the motivations behind this are much likely more nuanced and diverse. This form of populist anger toward Wall Street is nonpartisan. People on the right tend to want free market capitalism. People on the left tend to want government intervention that favors the people. The system we have now is neither of those things. The bailouts from the 2008 financial crisis prove that crony capitalism is alive and well. Wall Street can't lose. If they do, they'll just get bailed out thanks to extensive lobbying investments they've made over the years. Too big to fail, right? In essence, we have government intervention that both interferes with free markets and fails to financially serve the interests of the general population. It pisses off everyone except the kleptocrats. One of the very few issues that everyone in the United States can agree upon is that Wall Street is shady and stands against the interests of average Americans. This explains why so many people are cheering for these vigilante capitalists. For some Redditors, it goes beyond raging against the machine into the deeply personal. One user in particular posted a story about how his father lost his business and was psychologically crushed during the 2008 financial crisis while Wall Street firms received bailouts. For him, the objective was revenge. At the very least, there are forces at play here that go beyond the media's portrayal of these people. Deus Ex Machina. Just as the Wall Street bets digital mobs started converging around other shorted stocks, such as AMC theaters, the unexpected happened. Brokerage firms started restricting transactions relating to these stocks. Now think about this for a second. Firms like Robinhood, Interactive Brokers, E-Trade, and many others allowed their customers to sell their positions in these specific stocks, but did not allow them to purchase more shares. In fact, Robinhood went so far as to automatically sell GameStop shares and client accounts, quote, for their own good, citing, quote, unreasonable risk involved in brokering your position. Initially, there was some question whether or not brokerage level liquidity issues led to these actions, but Robinhood's CEO, Vlad Tenev, publicly stated that this was not the case. According to Tenev, when Robinhood accessed their credit lines and an additional $1 billion investment infusion from existing investors, it was to meet regulatory balance sheet requirements. If Robinhood and other brokerage firms do indeed have liquidity issues resulting from this, it's a seriously concerning issue. So did these firms actively step in to stop retail investors from short squeezing hedge funds any further? This seems pretty legal, but then again, no one is being arrested. Either way, a full accounting of what happened is absolutely necessary. By the way, Citadel, which is one of the firms that bailed out Melvin Capital, is also a major investor in Robinhood. The implications. Regardless of what you think about Wall Street bets, the implications of the GameStop rebellion are concerning. Why did these brokerage houses make the decision to stop allowing trades on these stocks? Were they influenced by someone with opposing financial interests? As you would expect, a class action lawsuit has been filed against Robinhood and others, so this thing will continue to play out in the legal arena. 
Wall Street Bets is being excoriated by the media who accuse them of market manipulation and liken the GameStop rebellion to the Capitol riots. If this is market manipulation, how can you say that the industrial size shorting used by these hedge funds is not? The actions of the brokerage firm to throttle retail investors from buying is certainly market manipulation. It looks like regulators and politicians are starting to get involved, so we'll soon see how the next act of Deus Ex Machina will fall. In the meantime, retail investors view the actions of these brokerage houses, blocking purchases of specific stocks, allowing their values to fall, and giving hedge funds the opportunity to cover their shorts as a blatant signal that the game is rigged. For the moment, it seems that populism isn't going anywhere. These Redditors certainly aren't buying GameStop because they think it's a good company with healthy long-term prospects. At some point, they'll have to liquidate. Will they hold on long enough to inflict pain on the hedge funds? Have the hedge funds really covered their shorts? Will Wall Street bets target silver in the same manner as they claim they will? We'll see how it plays out. If you need help positioning your investments in light of these events, then visit us at pranawealth.com to see if we're a good fit. We do still have the capacity to take on new clients. As a fee-only financial advisor in Atlanta, we can and do work virtually with clients all across the US, and we're here to help you whenever you're ready. If you found this video helpful, please help me grow my channel by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.